with United Americans Medicare supplement coverage, we now have lower monthly premiums, and all our claims are filed automatically. And changing our coverage to United American was really easy. To receive your free Medicare supplement guide, plus information on these affordable insurance plans available from United American, call 1-800-828-1636. Lice-killing shampoos kill lice, but up to 30% of lice eggs survive shampoos and can cause reinfestation. So after shampooing, use Clear Lice Egg Remover Gel and Comb to help remove the live eggs shampoos leave behind. Now, your local forecast on the Weather Channel. You're spending your Tuesday, Groundhog Day, that is, under rainy skies. That's actually good news. Mike's going to tell you more about that. In portions of the Northeast, good afternoon. Welcome to Weather Center. I'm Bill Keneally. And I'm Mike Bono. This Weather Center is sponsored by Fancy Feast. Uh, we're going to have a feast of rain and snow in the upper Midwest today. Bill's going to tell you more about that. After we take a peek at the Northeast, which leaves a lot to be desired on this Groundhog Day, 1999, a messy day for those of you in the Big Apple. Wind and rain make umbrellas and raincoats a necessity if you're out and about. Today's high only into the mid-40s, and that'll feel even worse with some wind blowing and the rain coming down. Make sure you stay dry. It'll feel even colder if you don't. The rain should begin to move out just in time for the evening commute. Meanwhile, you had to deal with icy roads, icy sidewalks in Worcester, Massachusetts today. Look at that. Hard to walk even up a hill at that point. Light freezing rain slowed down traffic and pedestrian traffic as well. Temperatures slowly creeping up this afternoon should melt a little bit of it, <clears throat> but as you can see, it was a scraping time this morning out around Worcester, Massachusetts. Low pressure to blame for that, and a warm front, ironically. Most of these wintry weather situations that you get are connected with warm fronts, ironically. The warm air coming up from the south, overriding cold air, and a high that's holding on for dear life, but the cold air associated with that old high moving out to sea is nestled in the valleys and the low elevations and the warm air rides up and over because it's lighter and it's that rising moisture that'll give you the clouds and the precipitation. And that's in the form of snow in places like Rutland and Montpelier, Vermont, and snow in Lebanon, New Hampshire. But Worcester, a little bit too much warm air flowing in now, still cold down below, and you have about 30, 31 degrees with freezing rain. Now, the fact that it's been so cold lately and the ground's been so cold is adding to the misery of the ice situation in a lot of southern New England, uh, whereas in a lot of the south you had freezing rain mostly on trees and power lines, except some of the higher elevations where it was even on the roadways. But that cold ground will get you every time. If the temperature's right around freezing, it'll freeze up anyway. Now, fog around the uh, Susquehanna Valley Harrisburg, back toward Danville, Virginia, where you were getting a little bit of ice yesterday, Lynchburg, Roanoke, and up around Bradford, Pennsylvania. So it's a real mess any way you look at it. Now, Maine, you're just beginning to see some of that snow moving into your state, starting to reach the ground around Rumford, Mexico, and down toward uh, York County, Kittery, 
and a lot of New Hampshire, again, central and northern, still in the form of snow, but that will turn over to sleet freezing rain pretty soon. And even Worcester, your ice will start melting and getting liquid precipitation as that warm push comes up. As the movement of these radar echoes go, there, there are upper level winds coming from that direction, the south southwest, and that's bringing in a rise in temperature, which will eventually make it down to the ground. In Hartford, where it's right about freezing, you should not have much of a freezing situation anymore by this afternoon. Although you go up into the hills around Hartford, some of the temperatures could still be cold enough and this morning's ice could be thicker. Back toward Albany, you've gone above freezing, looking good. Philadelphia, Atlantic City, no problem. But in Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania, I guess if you want an early spring, you were happy to see what happened this morning. The furry friend. Phil came out amongst, amongst hundreds gathered at Gobbler's Knob in west central Pennsylvania. And as the groundhog emerged, he did not see a shadow. These are TV lights, folks. This is a media event. No sunshine, no six weeks of winter. This means early spring. So there's a reason to celebrate. Uh, but uh, what about the spring we've already had in Pennsylvania over January? That's, uh, that's the question. Uh, winter is bound to come back, but if Phil is right, it won't last too long. We're looking at some mild temperatures in PA and even in Albany now, but still some icy patches in central and northern New England. As the warmth comes in, in changing to rain, Connecticut Valley, though, still icy into the afternoon, snow in Maine, and the rain will add up to over a half an inch in parts of the northeast. Chicagoland, Detroit, maybe some sprinkles, possibly an inch of snow in upper Michigan. But to the south, We've got the fog hanging in in North Carolina, but the rain is rapidly moving on out to sea in the southeast. Some scattered showers in Florida and along the Gulf Coast, possibly, but a lot of that not reaching the ground as temperatures remain well above average. Atlanta even will recover from 47 today, 55 in Birmingham. Here's Bill. Thank you, Mike. Those of you in the Western Lakes are dealing with a little bit of light snow today. Mainly rain, though, around Chicago of earlier now into the Motor City. Meanwhile, the western states getting buffeted by wind and increasing chances of heavy rainfall. Let's show you the weather map in the Midwest and we'll work our way farther west. First up, the frontal zone kind of spiking down from Canada. And that frontal zone is coming out of a low, which is way up there. And that's a real key here with that storm track way up in western Ontario. We're always going to see warm air pumped up ahead of this. And again, that's going to drive southwest winds and bring temperatures into the 40s up into the Motor City and around the Cleveland area. It's about 45 degrees. Even Buffalo to Albany, it's all wet today, driving on the New York State Thruway. That's the good news. Behind it, some colder air, not a whole lot. A little windy out there. I saw St. Louis gusting out of the northwest, better than 30 miles per hour last hour. But note the rain snow line. It's even north of, say, Madison, Wisconsin. Some snow in the Marquette area. Mifflin, 